Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in the previous video we talked about how we can set up JWT Barrier Token Authentication in our .NET Core application. In this video, I'll actually show you how we can register our users through an identity controller and how we can actually log in to get tokens and then I will use these tokens to enforce authentication on our POST controller which I have here. So stay tuned for that. So let's get started. First and foremost, I will need a few uh, new things, namely a controller. So I will make an identity controller and this will implement the extend the class controller and then I need a constructor which this contra constructor will use something like uh, a private read-only I identity service which doesn't exist yet but we will create it and I will initialize this from so Vizlir is not a real word. And then this controller will have two endpoints. So let's go to the API roots and let's say public static class identity. And in this class I will have, we just, actually I shouldn't copy this because that's useless. Public const string uh, login equals base plus identity for slash login now I know that um, it kind of breaks the restful um, principles to have verbs here um, but this identity section the whole thing should be in a separate identity server which doesn't really need to be a rest API the reason why I make part of this REST API is for simplicity purposes. So ignore the naming uh, inconsistency. Uh, this is the right one. This is not so much a RESTful way of doing it, but it's still a valid way of doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this service. So I'm going to say I identity service interface, and then I will copy the class name. And I'm going to make this, and this will actually implement that. And I'm gonna go in the MVC uh, installer. And what I'm gonna do up here is I'm gonna do a services.addScoped and I will explain why this needs to be scoped in a bit. And I'm gonna register my identity service. And now my controller will use this. Let me just import this on this HTTP post API roots dot identity dot we're gonna do register first because there's no point of logging in if you don't actually have a user so public async task which returns an I action result and we're just gonna say register and this will have a from body attribute which gets a user registration request And it's doing some stuff. We'll see what it will do. Let's just create this request first. So contracts v1 requests create new class registration request. And what this I imagine would have is um, an email. And um, let's keep it simple. Just do password. We got. I could do first name, last name, and things like this. For now, just email and password. Nothing else. Because the idea of adding more properties into your identity object is a whole different thing I'm going to cover later. So for now, just that. So now that we have this request here, um, I'm actually going to say that I need another domain object. And this domain object is um, an authentication result. And that's the domain object. And this will have uh, a token. This will be our JWT, a boolean on whether it's successful authentication or not, and a string, and that will be an error message. So that's for us to use to uh, figure out what happened with our request. And then for responses, I will have, let's say I have a login success response, and this has a JWT token, and that's it. 
actually we'll do registration so let's say registration success response in fact i don't need the success registration response that's it and um, for our registration we're going to return our, our token straight away this might not be the best practice but again for simplicity i'm going to return it now what you might want to do is once you register your users you might want to verify their email or something but for now we're just going to give the token back and use it straight away so registration response goes here and we can go back to our identity controller and uh, first things first i'm going to use the identity service and save our registration result actually i have the change of heart let's change this to of success response and this to be an off failed response and the reason why i want to do that is because they should have different objects this should have uh, an um, i enumerable string which is uh, the errors error messages maybe that the user will get back to uh, to display to the front end while this just has the token because it's always successful so that keeps our responsibilities cleaner uh, they both return the same authentication result but we just map it um, and the authentication result could actually have an enumerable string of errors here so we're refactoring as, a, as we're going if you're following uh, with me sorry <laughs> So, of response equals await identity service dot, and we're gonna say register async, and we're gonna get request dot email and request dot password, and we're gonna go ahead and create this here, and that's gonna be email password. And this will return an authentication result, the one we own. Once that's done, we can implement this into our derived class. And this class will need a .NET class. And this class is called user manager. And because we're not specifying a custom user, the default is identity user. And we're gonna use this user manager to do some magic. This needs to be a sync. And what we're gonna do is first we're gonna see if the user exists. So existing user equals wait user manager dot find manager sorry find by ID by email sorry and then I'm gonna get the user. If existing user is not null, which means that our user exists. Then we're going to return a new authentication result, which is uh, what well, success is fail is uh, by default um, false because it's a boolean. But we have an error saying user with this email address already exists. And we're gonna return that if all good then we're gonna say var new user equals a new identity user which is the user we just um, it's the user type that this user manager uses and you don't have to explicitly register this it's registered automatically through our DB installer just by saying add default identity and add identity stores so I'm going to say email equals to um, email and then I'm also going to say username equals to email. In this scenario, our user has the same email and username. Again, for simplicity, if you want something different, you can do it. And then we're going to go ahead and create it. So create the user equals await user manager, create a sync, new user, comma, password. And 
there's a reason why I didn't put the password here and I put it here is because this will go through the Microsoft uh, password hasher and will automatically sort and hash using a very good standard our password so we don't have to worry about this and we're gonna see how that looks like so we have our created user and then let's check whether that's successful or not so if created user is not has not succeeded then return new authentication result where errors equals and um, what I will do is I'm gonna say created user dot errors dot select and I'm gonna just select a bunch of strings which is uh, the description in this case so if you couldn't see that beforehand I should have made this bigger okay with that done let's go ahead and create here is where the token stuff come into the picture we need a token handler which is just a JWT security token handler then we need our key and for that reason we're gonna inject our settings so private read only JWT settings and um, I'm gonna say our key equals an encoding dot ASCII dot get bytes of the secret and then we need the token the scriptor and that's just a new security token descriptor and that just describes what our token should have the token we're going to return to the user and we need something called claims and the way you can specify that is in the subject uh, this might be quite the concept to understand but um, it's very simple it's, there's nothing hard about it just follow me and I'll explain as I go so claims are essentially a bunch of properties in our token that tells whoever is the token a bunch of stuff about the specific user things we need to know uh, could be his ID his email his username some permissions yeah, there's a lot of things we might want to add there and the good thing about this is we know this is issued by a server uh, because we are signing we're using the signing key to uh, verify that the token is valid so we can trust this uh, Core has this JWT register claim names which we can use and we're going to use them to add some basic claims one of them is the email so I'm going to say new user dot email another one is the JTI um, we will not use this now but what this is is a unique ID for this specific JWT and the reason why we use that is for token invalidation I will not show we can do token invalidation now but I'm definitely gonna show this later it's probably gonna be after the uh, video about um, JWT refresh tokens so this goes here I'm also gonna add the email of the user Uh, and that will be just the new user dot email and last but not least I'm gonna add the custom claim and that is the ID which is the new user dot ID because we could actually use this as from the JWT to um, do some stuff for that user so now we have our token descriptor we're gonna add a few other things we have the basic thing which is the claims we're gonna add the expires um, property and we're gonna say date time UTC now we want the UTC date and we're gonna add um, a couple of hours so the token will expire in two hours will no longer be valid and of course the signing credentials so new signing credentials new symmetric key and we're using our key and then we specify that the algorithm will use say the algorithm is the HMAC uh, SHA-256 signature and that's for our token descriptor I know it might be a lot to take in but please hang in there everything will become clearer if you follow all the videos so subscribe <laughs> okay so token descriptor and after all that the response will be successful so we're gonna say authentication result 
success equals true and then token token handler dot write token that's the point where we actually have the token and we're going to return that and that piece of code will create the user and the token let's see in practice what this actually looks like Ooh, before i do that i should check that at whether so if this is not successful we need to return a bad response so return new of failed response and we need a bunch of errors so the auth response should have errors and we just return those uh well not quite i need to wrap them in a bad request and this should be an okay request and this is new auth success response and this has a token and the token is auth response token so this nice little method will give us uh, the token let's pray that this works I mean I know it will work no I don't so what I have here is a register endpoint and um, I can have nick at test.com my password has some requirements so I expect this to yeah give me back the requirements so it says the password this is the default password rules you can change that um, from the uh, authenticate method uh, in the DI but for now I'm gonna say nick one two three four exclamation mark and execute and this gives me back a JWT token as you can see here and Let's see what this token has. This is a website where you can just paste tokens and see what they have. So I'm pasting this. It has the algorithm in the header. It has all my info. So my user ID, my email, my sub and my JDI. And then whenever this expires. And then it has a signature. We can of course use this. Take this from here. Add the bearer. And then paste it and authorize and then we can access the endpoints and let's see right now how that would work we can go back to my uh, post controller and what I need to do to, to make this um, authorizable authenticatable is that if I want uh, if I want every endpoint in the controller to do this then I just add the the authorize uh, attribute and I specify that I want my authorization scheme to be JW no JWT register no what was the name no okay that's the one I need to specify the authentication scheme uh, also let me just show you that the user is actually created so we could log in if we had the login endpoint which we'll be implementing in the next video our user is created we have a password has again has salted beautiful so if i run this so if i try to access this i should get an unauthorized 401 because i have nothing in my authorization header if i put some random stuff here and i just try to cheat it understands that this is uh not valid so what I want to do is, as I don't have a register, uh, a login endpoint, I'll just create another account. Nick one two three four exclamation mark, and then I can use this token again. As you can see here, I cannot do anything. But if I go here and say log out, and then bearer, and paste my token and authorize, then I can authorize and get two hundred. And that's it i'm authenticated now so in the next video we're gonna see how we can actually log in into this system and we we're gonna see things about token expiry and other things you can validate against so stay tuned for that leave a like if you like this video subscribe for more content and we'll see you in the next one keep coding